Well, yesterday I finished up this pond, put up a long form format video on it, but uh, did that with a little Mahindra. I'm happy with it. I calculate this part at uh, 45,000 gallons. So up from 15, where I started, I built this up so that when the water over tops, it'll run down into the swale, into the garden. This here is a horse trailer uh, trail here that they could take. So what do I have? I have just a little bit of finishing up to do. So uh, last year I built the uh, concrete uh, reinforcement there. Every now and then I, when I come through at a weird angle, I stick a wheel in there. So I wanna dig this out and put in some concrete uh, bags to reinforce it and make it, you know, 18 inches longer, 24 maybe, I don't know. So this is the first part where water builds up. Uh, and I do like this uh, so it's a catch basin and so I'm gonna dig this out a little more so where are we at today so this part of the catch basin I haven't dug out I'm gonna dig that out right now there's a little lazy river right here where stuff gets here but in a flood it, it just comes through this cattle trail as well up from the hills there so let's go ahead and Work on these little things that needed to get done. Well, digging out this uh, this little causeway is important to me. This is the sediment tank that I use for to capture all of the debris from the fields before it goes into the stock tank. Uh, but the frogs like this quite a bit, so uh, adding a little depth to this thing will protect them. Uh, I see a lot of birds come in and graze off of this particular area. Uh, it's got a little windy, lazy river that feeds it when the uh, rains come, but it also has a more direct path when the floods come uh, that it could just start filling this up. And as you saw in the picture, this this thing that looks dry and bones and no life to it is can really fill up uh, a lot of water at once. That's the way that the Central Texas works. Uh, can't even predict when the water will be. <laughs> but uh, getting these uh, ponds in this uh, po uh, section of land this is what I'm after right I want uh, there to be a little green spot here uh, I want all of the trees to be able to be put in I want some pecans I'm trying to make a food forest here uh, I put in 300 trees right off the reel when I first moved out here and the drought just killed them all and then the next year it killed them all and thousands of dollars of uh, misplaced uh, good heart I had a good heart good intentions but misplaced money because my good intentions couldn't deal with the reality of, uh, <laughs> and I've lived here in Texas a long, long time. I don't know. Hope springs eternal, and sometimes it's your enemy. It's certainly the enemy of your pocketbook. So you can see this little windy river here. Uh, the, it, the water does come down through it, and it does trickle, and it's it's fun to have it uh, trickle around. And that's the main feed right there by that gate. The, there's 50 feet difference from the top of that hill to the bottom. So once it fills the stock tank up uh, between there, then the rains come here and, and come this way and just uh, flow in. So it's a nice thing. Uh, after I scrape it all out. Well, there's no tractor job in the world that doesn't also include a shovel and a rake. <laughs> now, uh, I'm not trying to get perfection, but I want to stop... Uh, if there's a, a blockage, it'll keep the water from flowing when it and when and if it ever falls. I mean, I could be standing at the first day of end of times right now. How would I know, right? Uh, but uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get a shovel in here. Uh, one of my least favorite parts of any tractor job. But uh, just trying to get a consistent groove in here. Again, there's nothing special that I'm doing here. Getting rid of all of the blockages. Thing about being mortal, you get to a 
a point where the world makes decisions for you. Whether that's sickness or drought. All right. But I gotta do my best every day. All right, let's see how good of a dressing job I did on this stream. <laughs> so in the water pours off in a flood from that field. It fills up here. Water's my great oak tree, so I'm not changing anything about the slope there. I want to leave the oak alone. But I'm tapping in right here. And uh, oh, I've dug this out a couple of times. Got a little lazy creek there. Trying to slow it down just a little bit. It ends up in this first tank, which is a little holding settlement tank, if you will. I just want things to drop out and settle in here. And then, uh, you can't see, but, you know, it come down to drive and it would hit this little low spot too as well. So, it would be feeding in from two sides. I'm spreading out that, uh, in faith, I'm spreading out the uh, clay. Uh, the, when the rains come and soften it, that juniper, juniper didn't make it. Nothing makes it, man. It's just so, so tough. So tough. All right. I tell you, hand digging this is a lot. Hand digging, it's a lot different than using the uh, machine. Let me tell you. you reach underneath a tree and you catch your uh, your hydraulic hoses rolling it you'll rip a hydraulic hose off I learned that uh, the hard way a long time ago all right all of this is done I've knocked down all the barriers water can get in now the next thing I'm gonna do is over there right there I'm gonna dig out that culvert so it has a good opening and then I'm gonna put in a couple of cement old dried cement bags I pay 50 cents a piece for them uh, and I use them just like blocks so uh, but anyway I'll put some cement bags there let's go ahead and set up the camera for that that'll be the second little mini project I have all right well what you can't see is what I'm digging out is a plastic 12 foot pipe uh, that goes underneath the ground uh, that also is feeding the pond so once this holding tank fills up then it comes through that um, that uh, 8 inch pipe and feeds the larger stock tank which also has another culvert uh, through the driveway. So I, I like to go ahead and open this up. Again, it's a very popular little frog pond, but uh, my goal here is uh, to get this out where I can fix up that drain pipe, keep it from plugging up, as well as uh, do a little engineering around the edge. 
Uh, I've been running back and forth all over all of this clay <laughs> to try to break it down, make it into a usable surface. Once it rains, uh, this clay will be, I'll can grade it, it'll be usable. But until uh, then, <laughs> this is what I have to do. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna to try to cut into this and put a couple of concrete bags that are finished. I pay 50 cents a piece for these uh, because every rare now and then if I bring my truck or something for a reason, uh, I don't know, I get pinched up and I need to come this way. Uh, it's a little narrow. So what I'm gonna do is uh, leave the culvert opening and just put a couple of concrete bags here that I could drive over if I hit with a tire. I did it on the other side, it helped a lot. Just repeating the same effort here, that's all I'm doing. Again, this clay is like, uh, oh, chiseling concrete. <laughs> really is. It's slow going. Guys wouldn't believe it, there's a water bug that I just chopped out of hibernation. He's just waiting, he's got bait. He's got bait. Hope springs eternal. Why not? Why not make that extra hard? I appreciated that. All right. Hopefully I could drop the next one. Also fill in my hole. All right. Now the last time I did this, a bunch of people that know a lot more than I do on the internet got together and said I can't do this. This very thing that I'm doing right now and that I've done for 40 years, I can't do this. So they're ruined. <laughs> I repeat, concrete cured is ruined. Uh, boy, there's a lot of opinions on the internet. Most of them ain't worth spit. So listen, this still is, will hold five, five to 7,000 pounds. It's probably 12,000 pound braided concrete. So let's say it lost a little bit here in the bag, which I do not believe at all. I'm never driving over this with 10,000 pounds. I'm not driving over it with 5,000 pounds. Now I appreciate those that have gone before and give me good advice. I like good advice. But telling me I can't do something that I'm doing while I'm doing it, well, that ain't worth spit in your mouth, right? That ain't worth spit in your mouth. All right. See that? Got that out another, I'm gonna say two foot for me. 
So now if my tires come and swing wide, I'll be over the top of this. And you can look in there. Now I have it back filled it with dirt. Sometimes I'll even put rebar on there. If I was really concerned, I would go ahead and put rebar on that and pour concrete around it. Call that a day. I am not concerned. Not at all. And uh, the hole opens up there. Goes right in so I know my water will keep flowing. So now I'm going to fill it all in. But listen, the internet can't tell somebody they can't do something while they're doing it. And I get I want to build a you know, skyscraper uh, using this methodology. But I'm not. I'm just covering a culvert. That's it. That's it. Once this clay gets packed in there, it'll never come out. And then when I get tired of looking at that, and if it doesn't decay the paper fast enough, I get out with a can of spray paint and I spray it gray and green. You don't even notice. Anyway, yeah, that'll, that'll support a tractor if I miss it. Uh, it takes this from 12 feet to, uh, adds two feet here, two feet there. So I went from 12 feet to 16 feet, uh, and I'm comfortable with that. Now. Now I know I could pull a trailer through and whatnot. Alrighty. Next little project done. I might have all my little projects done. Alright, if you watch my video from yesterday, I did a pond dig over four days and I had a little bit of cleanup to do. And I am sorry for yelling at you, but the wind is something fierce today. And I know this cuts in and out. So uh, anyway, got the lazy river done looks pretty good I, I believe when the rain comes it'll flow in here and then I needed to dig out the uh, oh that's a catch pond I'm just trying to catch the uh, debris that washes off the field trying to keep the big pond from filling up in addition this is fully covered and uh, the frogs seem to prefer it in the spring they feel a little safer so I call this the frog pond and uh, I was excited to see a water beetle in all that clay when I cracked it open. Nature makes a way. And then I had this extension of the culvert. I put down, you saw two concrete bags and uh, for sides and a couple over the top. You know, if it ever, if I find out I'm moving stuff through here all the time and I see it cracked, I could always scrape the clay off and then uh, pour concrete over the top of that. Call that a day with some rebar, but I'm not gonna. I built this one, uh, I don't know, two years ago maybe, when I first cut this in so it drained. It's just amazing to me that this thing is flooded and uh, here I am in dry, dry. You would think that there had never been any rain in Texas. So, all right. The next step that I have to do is this little bridge, and it, it's not a step uh, in a little bridge. It's a major project. So the next major project will be to put a bridge from uh, that buttress over to this buttress. And the purpose of that bridge is I'm copying the same building technique I'm going to use for my roof just to prove uh, that it works and so that I learn how and also so that I have an analog of uh, the roof down low where I can inspect it for cracks and just get an idea right of uh, what might be going on above my head uh, that way I could get ahead of things if need be but uh, that's the next step in this project I'm gonna cr scratch the pond all the way off I am done with the pond the little bit of uh, dirt you see here and there the frogs will need that, the bugs will need that, things will need that to hide. So I'm not going to be religious about pulling that out. 
Uh, a little bit of clutter is a good thing for animals. It won't all fill up at once. And so this way people will have things, little critters will have places to hide as it fills up. Don't want the storks and cranes and urons to eat them all up. All right, all done. The next thing is the buttresses and I'm gonna gather logs up and even start that today. I might even get the temporary uh, construction across there. We'll see. All right, this is Steve, A Thousand Year Homes. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.